Hello, everyone. Welcome to another international capsule for the Shankar IAS Academy. Today, we'll talk about the agitation in China and Iran. Most unexpected, but at the same time, it is part of history. It is not unusual for dictators to fall or ideologies to be abandoned at the most unexpected times. It is normally happens when the most powerful people are found guilty of various things imagined and real. So in China, it's a matter of days after Xi Jinping had declared himself president for life, he had made a visit to Bali, where the leaders of the G20 were vying with each other to meet him. He dealt with him, with them like an emperor. He even criticized President, the Prime Minister of Canada, publicly for revealing some conversation he had with him. And generally, he was really like an emperor there. But when he came back, he discovered that there is a movement against him brewing there. It was not, of course, a political movement, but despair on the part of many people that the zero COVID policy of China had created considerable problems and uh, trouble for the people. When you hear zero COVID policy, it sounds good. The best is to have a zero COVID country. But it came at a time when most of the other countries were recovering from it. And China, where it all began, came to have more and more cases of COVID-19. And the way he dealt with it was in a very harsh manner. He declared lockdowns. He closed down apartments. He stopped people from traveling from one place to the other. And he, the restrictions were more serious than it was than they were when the pandemic first erupted. So people started expressing concern about this, particularly since the rest of the world was recovering and why China was engaged in this. And there was some suspicion that this was being done deliberately in order to keep the community, keep the people in check at a time when he is declared himself the, a Mao-like uh, leader for China for life. So this suspicion was probably behind the very strong protests that took place in China, in many provinces, particularly in uh, Beijing as well as Shanghai, where the biggest restrictions were imposed on the people because of the pandemic. This surprised uh, President Xi Jinping because he had expected people to generally accept these controls for their own interest. So we saw, witnessed a situation where uh, we found that the pent-up emotions against a dictatorship started coming out. This appeared strange uh, because it was all done by good intentions, as it was announced. But people saw very many dangers in that. And they thought that their freedom was being restricted and their freedom to choose what they want to do with themselves being eroded. This is reminded of the situation in the United States where people even refused to take vaccinations 
or wearing masks, etc., because of individual freedom. So the general conduct concept in democracies is that the freedom is unassailable and people have the right even to commit suicide. And so many people did not take vaccines, did not use masks, did not restrain themselves in the West. And that is what perhaps was a contrast for the Chinese. They thought that if that much of freedom is available in the rest of the world, why is it that this has uh, happened in China? So what started off as a, as a spark against this became so widespread that it looked as though the whole situation was being challenged and Xi Jinping's own authority was being questioned. He ignored it initially, but later he discovered that the best way was to relax some of the restrictions uh, so that the, the bitterness of the anger of the people would be controlled. This happens in many societies. When, um, when a dictator rules for several years, and suddenly some small incident uh, creates a problem. In China, protests are not extraordinary, not unusual. Uh, the biggest protest was in 1989 when the Tiananmen Square protest took place and it was put down with a heavy hand by the communist administration and many people were killed. And it looked like the beginning of a big revolution in China. But the authorities imposed very many restrictions and killed many people and eventually put down that revolution. So it like, looked like something like that, but fortunately it did not go to that extent. And uh, President Xi Jinping started uh, you know, you know uh, lifting the restrictions in order that he, his own position can be secured. A similar thing happened in Iran also. In Iran, after the Islamic revolution, this is the first time that an open revolution has broken out on the question of wearing of hijab. A 22-year-old a girl was uh, arrested for not wearing hijab properly and um, in jail she was probably tortured and she died in prison. Of course, the police says that she had some other illness which resulted in her death. But this has brought about an uprising in Iran against so-called morality police, which is very strong in Iran. And there, they have not relented on the question of hijab, and they are really trying to control the mobs and to restrain them from any kind of activity. So both these have the same kind of um, results at a time when two regimes, which are at the most powerful moment, Iran had just elected a new president who is a hardliner. And so it could happen in such cases that uh, uh, the uh, new revolution could take place and the governments could change. This has happened in history. But again, new dictators come, new regimes come, new ideologies come, and history repeats itself. The situation in China and Iran have been brought to some kind of um, shall we say, uh, lighter has been, the situation is becoming normal. But the way the whole thing exploded appeared to be a warning to both the Chinese and Iranian regimes. And this can happen at any time. And therefore, there is some concern in both these countries that their regimes may be in danger. As I said earlier, Xi Jinping had come back from his trip abroad. 
as a powerful leader recognized by the world as such and he has started equating himself uh, with the great helmsman Mao Zedong and everything was in place uh, for him. And then the situation got worse and uh, it appeared as though it will go beyond control. His program could have been, if, if there was no emotional side to it, this program would have been accepted by the people. But um, the, the way it was handled with, the, with an authoritarianism, with uh, very strict rules and regulations, and therefore it looked as though another Tiananmen Square problem might arise. About four years ago, Xi Jinping had himself warned his people that we should be aware of black swans. This is the word he used. He said, we should all be aware of black swans. And also, we should be careful about gray animals. And um, this was something that he said in a very philosophical manner, indicating that there could be dangers in the society. And you should be careful about those. So now it looks that the black swan had just arrived. And uh, gray rhinos, as he called them, are some of the problems that you should be aware of, he said. And that appeared to have happened. So there's a big challenge to his uh, authority. And uh, at the moment, Xi Jinping is struggling very hard to get out of the situation. The first signs of uh, protests came in, on October 13th when an activist disguised as a construction worker put up some posters in different parts of the, of the city. In these posters, it was said that the various measures which have been imposed by the government had its dangers and uh, he asked the people to protest and resist these changes. Of course, immediately he was arrested and removed and nobody knows where he is. Because one of the, um, the posters said that what we need is not a leader but the protection of the interests of the people. And he came to be known, this particular man was came to be known as the bridge man. Just like the person who sparked of the Tiananmen Square the problems was called the tank man. So the one who started the spark spark in Tiananmen Square in 1989 was called the Tank Man. And so this man who put up these posters on the bridges was called the Bridge Man. So immediately this spread like wildfire in the country and uh, spread to various protests. And uh, as it normally happens, it went to educational institutions, universities, etc. So the protest was because of the concern that they had was their individual freedom was being challenged. So immediately the government started relaxing many of the, of the uh, restrictions. But at the same time, same time, it did not have much effect because COVID cases increased during that period. So in a sense, it was justified that these restrictions were imposed because when it was relaxed, there was more infections, there were more instructions in the, in the country. Another serious 
incident took place on November 24th when an apartment building caught fire and people could not escape because of the very many restrictions and many passages were closed because of the lockdown and the people could not escape when the fire took place. We don't know how the fire took place. But in the process, about 10 people died. And this was attributed to uh, the restrictions on COVID because there was no way for people to escape. So this also added to the added fuel to the fire. And all this was attributed to the cruelty of the administration. And um, people started remembering what were the things that Xi Jinping had done since 2012 against personal liberties and we established himself as a dictator. And this, this spread uh, all over. Uh, there were also restrictions about travel of people. And it had become very difficult after the zero COVID policy was imposed. It became difficult for people to get passports or to travel abroad. So this was particularly painful for many people who wanted to go to Qatar to see the football matches. Many people, many thousands of people who wanted to go, could not go. And even it was not possible for them to assemble in places to watch the game. But this was a pastime in many people, many places, even in India, we know that. Instead of sitting and watching television at home, people assemble in different areas and watch it on a giant screen for better effect. And also better, you know, the spirit of the people uh, being so alive. So this also created some kind of a resentment. And uh, so, and this also created some dissatisfaction. And all this was because of the um, the protests against the COVID controls. Another incident that took place was in universities, they started, the students started holding up blank white papers, like it was done long ago in the Soviet Union. Soviet Union at a demonstration, uh, students held up just white paper without anything written on it, saying that we all know the problem, therefore we don't need to write anything. Everybody knows that we are miserable. So this is what happened many years ago in the United States, in uh, Russia, in the Soviet Union. And this was copied. And uh, this also created quite a stir. And the students in Shanghai and others, other cities uh, challenged the police and created havoc. Uh, interesting thing is that this particular demonstration or protests have no leadership as such. These are all spontaneous. And there is no person is identified as the person who exhorted them to do so, except the bridge man. So this was even more surprising that uh, without any directive, or even uh, the internet not being very effective, the anger of the people increased, and uh, people started moving around and protesting against the government. These are all the things that actually happened. But the analysts, you know, China watchers all around the world are watching as to how this will end, whether it will end or whether it would eventually it will lead to the fall of Xi Jinping himself. Uh, but so far the indications are that the, what the, the government has done in terms of relaxing these uh, uh, measures. And uh, since Xi Jinping had placed all his favorite people in the right places everywhere. He was able to control this effectively. So it may not become a revolutionary move, and this will be brought under control, at least for the time being. But the prediction that Xi Jinping had made, that black swans and uh, gray rhinos 
might arise and we should be careful of them actually happened. And uh, it gave him an opportunity to control it and also take measures. And therefore, it's quite possible that he will continue and the problem will be resolved. Uh, this is not as serious as what happened in Tiananmen Square. And the army did not use much force. And they basically controlled the crowds and did not shoot at them or anything of that kind. So we can uh, take it that the, the situation will be under control very soon, even though anything unexpected can create more difficulties. The protests in Iran are, have are also been very serious. On September 16th, someone called Masa Amini, a 22-year-old girl, died in police custody after she was arrested for wearing hijab in the wrong way, not properly, and also appearing in uh, revealing jeans in public places. So when this girl died in jail, there was protest and there was suggestion that she must have been killed. But the authorities have said that no, she had uh, some illness of some kind. But protests grew against this. Young people, particularly women, you know, went out on the streets all over the country. And uh, this was the first time after the Islamic Revolution of 1979 that such an organized protest was uh, protest took place. Uh, although they were very peaceful, the police very were harsh with them. And uh, in schools and universities and even oil establishments, very serious protest marches took place. What hurt Iran, Iranian government, more than anything else during these protests was that the Iranian football team in Qatar, when the uh, when the football match was opened, refused to sing the Iranian national anthem and also uh, shouted slogans against the government. This being done in. Uh, uh, outside the country and at a very important uh, um, sort of an important event. It brought a lot of shame to the Iranian government. And in the protests, something like, according to Western sources, about 420 people were killed and about 20 policemen also lost their lives. In Europe also, they spread wherever Iranian, the Iranian people of Iranian origin were present. And uh, there was even accusation that this whole movement has been generated by the United States and uh, Israel. There have been uh, different opinions about making hijab compulsory. It happened in 1983. At that time itself, there were various uh, protests, protest marches. Then the new government, which came in place in 2021, Ibrahim Raisi, the present president, actually imposed more controls on proper clothing uh, for women. And that is what erupted when this girl died. Another reason, of course, is the financial difficulties into which Iran has fallen because of the sanctions against Iran. How President uh, Trump left the arms deal which was signed between Europe and Iran and uh, imposed sanctions against them. As a result, the economy has become worse and worse. Iran has been trying to sign a new new nuclear deal. This is being discussed in Vienna. But there has been not been much progress. And therefore, the new government has not been able to find a meeting ground with the Europeans and the 
Americans. It is expected that if such an agreement is reached and finalized, sanctions will be lifted and uh, things might get, a, get better. Again, like in China, there is really no threat to the Islamic government at this point. Because last time the regime changed because the army changed its policy. The army turned against the government. That is why the Islamic Revolution won in 1979. But this time, army is with the government and the uh, new, new president. And therefore, there is literally no danger of the government itself falling as the army has indicated their support uh, for the government. But there were reports that the moral police was being abandoned or abolished. So there was much uh, jubilation among the people that this was done, but the Iranian government has not yet confirmed that. Maybe it was just a rumor, but people say that the morality police is not seen on the streets in the last few days. So that may be uh, a concession that they are making in order to bring the situation under control. So there is uncertainty. The protest had not ended. There has been no relaxation on the uh, rules relating to uh, women, women's clothing. Uh, but um, Anything, it could happen and may become a, a flare-up may be possible. But anyway, in both these cases, China and Iran, are there as though there uh, is, although there is, although there is some similarity of the suddenness of the protest and the seriousness of the allegation, all amounting to expression of freedom, which both Chinese government and the Iranian government do not recognize. So individual freedom and liberty are in question. And at the moment, these movements do not have the kind of strength to become revolutions. And the governments, both in China and Iran, have been able to suppress them. Uh, but the, the message is clear. The writing on the wall, as they say, is clear that both these regimes may come under pressure or even small things, because what they are doing to the people is to suppress their freedom. And uh, ex and objection to that might come about because of some small incidents, what Xi Jinping called the black swans and the grey rhinos. So they are already visible, they have been suppressed, but it's possible that such dangers may come again. And that's a warning for both the Chinese government, as well as the Iranian administration. Thank you.